for inviting me to participate in this forum. So the topic of my presentation is nurses as a drive of change for better health care. I don't have anything to disclose. And there are two elements that in, in this uh, introduction of the importance of nurses and nursing in healthcare, um, these two main points that I wanted to emphasize today, one is the health for all, the importance of this um, indication for, from WHO in order to, to have a better health, we need to improve and strengthen primary care. And health care is a human right, and nurses are at the front line of all services in all areas of health care. And the other element that I wanted to emphasize initially is the, the concept of SDGs. Mm, just uh, before the, the pandemic, the WHO and many international organizations were emphasizing, emphasizing the need to, to work together in all these 17 aspects of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And out of all of them, there are a number of um, uh, areas where nurses are a special, um, a key element to reach that goal. Of course, we are um, fundamental in SDG number three, health and well-being, but also in relation to number four, like quality of education, gender equality, decent work and economic growth, and in other um, objectives uh, related to social determinants like clean water and sanitation, reducing uh, inequalities and also climate uh, change and clim climate action. Of course, nurses are um, fundamental in all these areas and you can see in this slide right now that the main drivers of change for all uh, challenges included COVID or other healthcare challenges that we can and we know like um, aging of population or increase of uh, chronic conditions. In all those uh, great challenges, we have three main drivers for change. And the first one is healthcare services. You see it in green. We need, for instance, with the COVID pandemic, we, we have identified that we need good ICUs, good emergency rooms. We need PPEs for all health professionals. We need good primary care as well. And together with the technology, the technology that will provide the vaccines necessary to vaccinate um, the whole uh, population of the whole world. No? So in that way, we need um, artificial intelligence, big data. And in that sense, uh, in many countries, like in Spain, we are in a good shape. We have, uh, in general, we can say that we have um, high technology healthcare centers with uh, research included and also uh, with uh, all the services required. But that's not enough. We all know that in order to, uh, to respond to these great challenges like COVID, we need other, um, we need to work in other areas. And these other important and fundamental areas are, one is the population, you see it in blue. Uh, we need to empower the people. We need to educate them about the importance of health prevention and 
uh, early detection of uh, health problems. And for that, it's not enough to tell the people you need to wear a mask and use uh, distance um, and decrease the social contact. We have to uh, know what are the expectations, what are the behaviors, uh, because variance among populations is not the same uh, way that the message have to be delivered. It's not the same for teenagers, for young people, for elderly people. So, and that is an important drive of change. And in that one, nurses are very key in, in if we want to succeed in the way that nurses are educated at the university and we know how to empower people um, with all working on all dimensions of that empowerment. And the third drive for change are the health workforce. In that way, uh, we need to work in multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary teamworks and together nurses with physicians and other health professionals are also the third important drive of change. Um, and today I want to emphasize uh, the, the aspect of nursing, no? because um, uh, al along this, um, this presentation, I hope to make it clear why nurses are so important uh, to be able to, to, uh, to cope and to respond to these big challenges. And this is not new. We know that nurses are essential from different backgrounds. And you have in this slide full samples of, uh, for instance, I want to emphasize the work published by the what used to be the, the Institute of Medicine nowadays, the, the National Academy of Medicine in the United States, no? the, the document about the future of nursing that was published more than 10 years ago. And in that document, it states very clear that nurses have to be full partner with physicians in the redesign of healthcare. Of course, there were other elements like to promote advanced nursing practice and increase the number of doctors in nursing and so on. But one special element was that view that nurses have to be full partners with the physicians in the redesign of healthcare. And I want to emphasize this element because COVID has um, put on the table the need for, for a transformation of healthcare systems in many can, countries, including Spain. We have a national committee and also many committees in the autonomous uh, uh, areas and in, in Catalonia, for instance. No? that uh, experts are um, studying how to improve healthcare, how to transform healthcare in order, in order to improve and to satisfy the needs of the people. In that way, um, two years ago, a little bit more, in the uh, main presentation of the International Council of Nursing in the welcoming, welcoming ceremony, the president of Singapore, a country that is um, having good response to COVID, that um, president, a woman, said, by improving the position of nurses in society, we will improve the position in women in general, and that will lead to better education for women and better health for all families and communities. And she said, if you save a life, you are a hero. But if you save 100 lives, you are a nurse. Besides that, uh, year after year, we know that nurses are at the, the, the most 
trusted uh, professions because of their honesty and ethical standards in, in practice. And you can see in this slide like uh, uh, members of Congress are in the last positions. No? We, uh, we all, all, all of us um, probably agree with that um, situation in most of our countries. Besides that, um, Linda Aiken, one of our great uh, researchers, a leader, a visionary no? uh, from the University of Philadelphia, no? she has um, um, in many times, even recently, has published uh, a lot of research, quantitative and qualitative as well, indicated, indicating that among different variables, um, in relation to nursing outcomes, there are two independent variables that um, impact patient mortality. And these two important independent variables and the amount of nurses and the education that those nurses have, the higher education, better outcomes, and and more staffing, better outcomes. And that was published in Lancet in 2014. And in that way, in many of our countries, we have a good um, um, alternative for nursing education. For instance, in Spain, our nurses can graduate with a degree university um, uh, um, for all of those nurses. Of, based on a four-year academic uh, with all the sciences included. We have a good education system. We have good master programs and also PhD and even specializations. So our um, teachers, our professors, like uh, Professor uh, Fabreyas, are doing a great work in our countries to provide a, excellent education to our future um, uh, professionals. However, um, that's not um, the same in all the countries now, and also is not the same in terms of the amount of nurses that we have in every country. You know? The OECD statistics uh, publish um, uh, the last report indicates, as you can see in this slide, that the average among those 28 countries is to have 8.8 nurses per 1,000 uh, population. However, in Spain, we have just 5.7 nurses per 1,000 population. And you can see that uh, there is a huge variety, you know, like in Norway or Finland, they have even three times more nurses per population than in Spain. So uh, we have well-educated nurses in Spain, but not enough nurses working um, at the bedside and in primary care and long-term care as well. So that's why Nursing Now campaign was built uh, about four years ago. And the vision of this campaign was to improve health globally by raising the profile and status of all the nurses around the world. Really an ambitious vision, no? And what we have been working along these two, four years almost, is to lobby our policy makers in every country uh, and to support nurses, nurses in leadership and we have built a global movement, no? a global movement with the main aims um, uh, besides of those that I uh, stated before, that, that was the general objectives. We have other more specific objectives like to influence the universal health coverage, the um, NCDs and uh, also the, the, the the general objectives that I mentioned initially in the presentation. We want to promote and develop nurse leaders. We want to disseminate and share 
effective practice, the good practice, and also our objectives were to create and identify the evidence of our nursing impact, no? That in that way to invest in nursing in all the areas. So what have we done specifically along these four years? No, we started with the publication by the um, the all um, parliamentarian parties of um, UK Parliament and um, the, the document uh, well known. Uh, entitled the triple the triple impact the triple impact of nursing that is better uh, outcomes for patients and health for the citizens and also uh, a better uh, a more um, an improvement of of women in in society in terms of, uh, of gender equality and also better outcomes in terms of economics of the of the country that um, invest in nursing no after that we participate in the wish um, international conference with uh, most of the um, country leaders no and we were really emphasizes emphasizing the need to invest in nursing and midwives Besides that, we collaborate with the Astana um, document. All of you know that Alma Ata uh, was um, that uh, agreement was established 40 years ago. So that um, vision had to be renovated, and Astana is is the framework for the next um, years in terms of promoting. Um, primary care and potentiating also uh, elevating the profile of nurses in primary care. Mm -hmm. Besides that, we work with the Nightingale Challenge. We have over 37,000 nurses all over the world involved in that uh, challenge. Nurses younger than 35 years of age that are uh, collaborating in different groups um, internationally. We published the document about the, the barriers and the limitations that nurses are having around the world um, in terms of leadership. And of course, all of you know that last year we published the first ever um, document in relation of the state of the world nursing report. So that report, that report, what message send us? You can see in this picture that in terms of colors, no, uh, is, is a good uh, way to, to see um, and to view what is the state of the world nursing report. In blue, in dark blue, are those countries that have good nursing uh, conditions in general, good amount of nurses, and the light blue, there are two light blues, uh, and as this blue is lighter, like in Spain, that means that the nursing uh, conditions, the state of nursing in that country is, uh, is in a worse situation. No? And of course, in red are those countries that uh, has, have much more room for improvement. But it's true also that countries like Pakistan and Uganda has made a huge improvement along these three or four years of uh, nursing now, because this campaign on the, in these countries have been really instrumental to elevate the profile of nursing and nurses. So this report in the main message uh, that we have learned is that nursing and nurses is the largest healthcare group in, we are approximately 60% of all healthcare workers. And we, we have about 20 million registered nurse, professional nurses around the world. This is a 
great number. No, we can do a lot of things with all those nurses, wonderful nurses, excellent nurses that are working in every area of healthcare. And we have um, about 71% of the countries that answered that report, that was 191, have, have, have a national chief nurse officer. We don't have one in Spain, but in many countries exist, uh, they have that, um, that leader of, of, of nurses and nursing you know, that um, contribute to improvement in, improvements in healthcare. We have to, uh, we know that one out of, out, out of uh, eight nurses are working outside of their own countries. Many nurses from Spain go to work to UK because they are looking for better con working conditions. And we also know that 90% are women, but just a few nurses in leadership. In healthcare, about 80, 85% of all healthcare workers uh, are women. However, only 25% of high level positions are uh, covered by women. So uh, that's in general in healthcare. If we look into how many of those leaders are nurses, the, the, percentage, the percentage is much uh, smaller. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of room to improve, a lot of work to do in that area of leadership in high level positions. We have nurses that are very competent, those values that are necessary for healthcare, like uh, humanism in besides of technology, even in ICU, that uh, value is provided in many cases also but by other health professionals like physicians, but nurses are there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and really are in charge of providing those values in some way. Uh, we know that 53% of the countries that answer that report have advanced nursing practice with uh, good regulation and good um, um, standards of practice and recognition. We know that uh, those nurses contribute in, in a great way to the sustainability of the healthcare system and participation in decision making. Advanced nursing practice is also a way to uh, improve healthcare, that the evidence is clear, you not know, the evidence by Kelly Kilpatrick in, in Canada, for instance, a well known, uh, and all the, the reports. Um, published by ICN. Besides all these aspects, I have also to emphasize that we have a great shortage of nurses around the world. Right now we have a shortage of more than or about 6 million people and this will increase up to 10 million people in by 2030 due to the retirement of many nurses. For instance, Europe needs right now uh, approximately a 7% more of nurses. Mm -hmm. And we need um, to harmonize all the regulations because really the diversity is huge among countries and also between countries in some places. And we also need to improve working environments and working conditions. If we um, educate more nurses at the university and in the nursing schools, that is not enough because nurses will continue moving to other countries in looking for better, um, better professional um, development. So we need to modernize and attract more nurses in a better way because this international mobility will continue. So out of this um, first ever um, state of the world nursing report, we have uh, the message that the countries have to invest in education, in employment, and also in nursing leadership. And the countries, the governments, the politicians, um, the decision makers, they have to move from 
um, from um, words to actions, to real actions. We need a plan for actions to strength and to improve all these areas that will impact significant, significantly in the health for all. As Lord Chris, um, uh, the founder of this movement, sets, um, we are creating a new, a new story, a new view, together with what is going on around the world with the pandemic, you know, that um, has made nurses more visible. But uh, nurses, in many cases, are uh, too often undervalued underused, uh, the older competences are not completely fully used and their skills and they are not visible. So we also have to improve uh, the, the leadership. Uh, and in that way, we recommend to potentiate young nurses uh, that want to get into leadership positions. And we have to educate them, we have to mentor them, we have to have to build programs to mentoring, to mentor those young nurses. And we have to also um, lobby the government so they include enough number of nurses in government positions. Uh, we said the sentence that one is not enough. One is not enough. We know for experience that in many cases they just uh, include a nurse to, uh, to, to, to say that they have nurses on those uh, teams, but in many cases they are in a very minority numbers and, and really their, uh, their impact is uh, minimized in many ways. We have to use technology, all these new uh, tools and, and, and new developments you know, that are building right now thanks to, to, to the pandemic and uh, of course always based on evidence. You know? and of course as well working together with the, um, with the, with the other healthcare professionals uh, within the team. Annette Kennedy, the president of ICN, uh, says that we need to tell the world what we do. Uh, nowadays, the society sees nurses as um, a fundamental element in healthcare, but they don't have a clear idea of what is our function. Uh, we have to let them know what are, are our competences and what can we do for each one of them. That is important to tell them. We have to tell them that we can solve their problems because we do research, we do innovation, and we can manage their problems in a, an effective way. We have a unique holistic approach to healthcare and we are working in every point of care around the world and in also in all the transitions from hospitals to home care or from home care to long-term care. So we need to help the public understand what is uh, the importance of nursing in healthcare in some way. Um, nurses are fundamental and we also have to take care of them. We have to take care of their well-being. Um, we have to foster their motivations. We have to understand their expectations in relation to, to their um, uh, preferences is not the same uh, a nurse that was educated or has is at the end of her professional career that, than young nurses that are graduating, that are the um, millennials or 
um, these young generations that have other uh, ways to to approach problems and of course other expectations because uh, we have to avoid or minimize as well the abandonment uh, the the amount of nurses that are leaving our profession this is a problem in many nordic countries due to the covid uh, situation many nurses are um, leaving our profession um, absenteeism stress exhaustion staff shortages and physical violence are problems that we have to also um, to, to cope and, and we have to provide with solutions in a creative and, uh, and, and collaborative way. No? So we have to move from silence uh, to a more visible voice. Uh, and we have to use all those uh, strategies that the good leaders use, you know, like Dr. Tedros that you have here in the picture or Elizabeth Iron that is the chief nurse officer of WHO um, together with uh, different members of her team. You know? we need to expand and renew the enthusiasm for improving healthcare by making nursing more visible to the public and to the media. We need to lead with passion and vision for the future of nursing and healthcare. Um, we need to believe in our own competences and our own abilities to solve patient problems that we have then. We have to take into consideration that journalists, they do not know about nursing competences. So we have also to educate them along the, the uh, pandemic. We have seen many pro programs on TV and on radio than where uh, nurses were not invited as experts, but as second level healthcare workers that were invited to tell them about their experiences, uh, but not to um, contribute to explain what is the, the COVID situations in their work environment based on their knowledge. So we have to analyze public attitudes to our nurses and project a positive image of a contemporary nursing, of course, those nurses that are very talented, very competent, and uh, that are ready to, ready to, ready to uh, participate in an active way in decision making. Um, and those nurses are based their knowledge on credibility and, and expertise. No? So these are some uh, elements that we have to take care of in order to really be the drivers together with other health professionals um, for a better health care. We have to take care of all these areas. No? Our voices have to be listened the voices of nurses that are working at the bedside, the nurses that are working in ICU, the nurses that are working in primary care, in long-term care, in emergency units, the APNs, and also the chief nurse officers in healthcare, that some of them are really making a big effort to effectively uh, respond to those uh, healthcare challenges that we have in every environment. So uh, Elizabeth Iron, as I mentioned, the, the chief nurse officer of I, uh, WHO said, we have to tell the people we are nurses. Nurses, no healthcare workers, we are nurses. And we have to, to tell the world what we do with facts with experience, with statistics, and also with quality, based on qualitative uh, research outcomes. 
in order to reach the media, I think uh, we need to, to be a little bit more um, uh, uh, clever in the way that we have to identify the target audience, introduce ourselves as a nurse, of course, and when the, uh, the program is um, introduced as, as healthcare professionals, we have to uh, teach them and let them know, yes, I am a nurse. No? And in many cases, I am a doctor in nursing, as many of you are. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to focus the, mes the message in relation of what are their expectations, no? and uh, all, always based on what, on what we know. We have to create materials and sometimes even if the media is no calling us, the, the great leader said, we, why not to call them no? and uh, ask them to invite us to participate in their programs. So just to fin finalize my, my presentation and then to start the debate and to have more conversation, we love all of you. And I want to recall what uh, Dr. Tedros said. Um, last year, um, in December 2019, Dr. Tedros sent a letter, a personalized uh, letter to all, to each one of the presidents of every country, telling them that 2020 was the year of the nurse and the midwife, and explaining them the importance of nurses and uh, asking them uh, to invest in nurses and midwives. And we always said nurses and midwives because in many countries like Poland, for instance, uh, midwives are a different uh, profession. So this letter was sent and some of those presidents uh, uh, had uh, that letter was well taken and um, immediately um, call him or call nursing now asking about uh, in what way they could contribute to improve the investing, investment in nurses and nursing uh, in their own countries. No? So this is really important. Uh, it's important to think about leadership because uh, the Nursing Now campaign has been extended until the end of May 2021. And we hope you will join us in a global parliamentarian lobby in March aimed at making an evidence-based call for investment and action to ministries of health and finance um, in every country. So nursing now continues working. This is um, an important campaign, not only for nurses, but also for patients and the citizens. And in that way, I want to recall that this is our time. This is our time because we are in the middle of an important um, financial uh, crisis besides of the health and social crisis. So this is our time. This is our opportunity. This is our responsibility. Together, let's do it. So I want to thank all the nurses that are um, in this audience and that are working around the world to respond against COVID-19 in hospitals, in primary care and community care, in long-term care, at the universities, in ICUs, in emergency units, and also those nurses that are committed to best practice through nursing research or through research. So thank you very much all of you for, um, for inviting me to participate uh, to this conference. And I'm ready to answer all the questions that you have.